everybody, this is Miss Segovia, and I am going to walk you through your notes on Evolution. So you should have your cover page for Evolution, and then I'm going to turn the page. On the left-hand side, we're going to be doing an activity, so let's do our notes on the right. So our title for our notes is Darwin's Theory of Evolution. Darwin's Theory of Evolution. And our question for this is, where did Darwin travel and what did he observe that led him to his theory? So zoom in there a little bit, and you might need to pause so you can get that, but where did Darwin travel and what did he observe that led him to his theory for Darwin's theory of evolution? So since you guys are uh, avid kiddos, we're going to go ahead and draw our avid lines. Our notes today are a little long, so I want you to take it down to the last couple lines. So your summary is going to have to be very, very short and sweet. All right. So first off, let's start with what is evolution. Now let's underline that because that is our key vocab word for this unit. Now you're going to hear a lot of definitions, but the basic, it is the process of change over time. So we're going to be noticing some changes happening to organisms, and um, not just individuals, but more so populations. And uh, we'll be talking a lot about that. So let's uh, mention a little bit about Darwin here himself. So in Darwin's travels aboard the HMS Beagle. That doesn't mean that he rode a dog around. The Beagle is a ship. So the HMS Beagle. In Darwin's travels aboard the HMS Beagle, which began in 1831, quite a while ago, he made three important observations. So our first one, the world includes a tremendous, and tremendous means a lot of diversity of living things throughout a wide range of habitats. So it was really cool when Darwin was aboard the Beagle, this great big boat, he traveled the world and he saw all sorts of neat things, but uh, he was able to compare those things and be like, wow, like I see this on this continent, but over here there's a completely different thing or something very similar. I wonder if they're related. Hmm. And so when it comes to being related, second thing he observed is animal species. like those in the Galapagos Islands and you could still go visit the Galapagos Islands today and see a lot of what Darwin saw. It's pretty cool. That are related can have different characteristics or occupy 
different habitats in the same area. So these creatures, you know, they can all be living together like in the same general area, but some might be in the water, some might be in the trees, uh, even though they're related and they have these adaptations that allow them to live there a little bit better. And we'll have some more examples of that coming up. And the third big observation that he saw is that fossils, And sometimes you might hear those called um, preserved remains. Of ancient organisms. So sometimes they'll do that on a test. Instead of just saying fossils, they'll say, when they found the preserved remains of ancient organisms. Oh, really, they mean fossils. Um, but what he saw was that fossils resembled many organisms alive today. So when Darwin was on the ship, he was actually allowed to get off, go walk around the islands, go explore. He did some digging and he found some bones of, especially of tortoise shells uh, or tortoises that look a lot like the tortoises that are alive right now, but there were some big differences. So he thought that was kind of interesting. So ultimately, Darwin's observations led him to develop the scientific theory of evolution. Let's underline that because that's a big deal. Now, I know sometimes people are like, mm, I have a theory that today it will be rainy. You know, that's, that's not the same thing as a scientific theory. Scientific theory means we have lots and 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 lots of evidence. So uh, theory in science is a much stronger word than theory that we use in common everyday English. So his theory of evolution, which explains how modern, that's what we see today, organisms, evolved over long periods of time. And so um, when he was doing this thing, he kind of noted two big things. One is adaptations. So adaptations are traits that help an organism survive and reproduce. Ultimately, what we find in evolution is even though you may have like something really, really awesome that like is superhero powers or something, unless you reproduce, you don't pass those genes on to the next generations and you really don't matter. And so in order for an adaptation to be part of evolution, you have to be able to reproduce. And so um, jokingly, we kind of say, babies have to be able to make babies who are able to make babies. And so your offspring need to grow up, produce more offspring, more babies, and we can then start to consider that as a successful adaptation. The other thing that Darwin is very famously known for is natural selection. Now, natural selection at the time was kind of a big deal, but you know, today it just it seems like common sense. So, this is the process by which individuals that are better adapted 
to their environment are more likely to survive and reproduce than other members of the same species. So those that, um, you know, maybe have a thicker fur do better in a colder climate. And so they are able to live longer and reproduce more than their uh, close relatives that maybe have the thinner ones. And they, they freeze and shiver and they aren't able to uh, survive and be very successful. And so natural selection eliminates those who aren't as well adapted, so only the ones who are survive. Now, of course, there's always going to be exceptions to that, but, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the general overall thing. All right, so now there are factors that affect the process of natural selection. So to help us fit this one in, so what factors affect natural selection? And there are three of them. So our factors. We have overproduction, and so this is having more offspring than can survive. I'm gonna to have to squish this in. So things that have more offspring um, that could survive are things like insects, fish. You know, they'll have tons and tons and tons of babies, but maybe only two or three get to be adults. And so again, natural selection, uh, only those who are a little bit stronger and tougher survive. And um, you know, so parents, they, they that species create lots of babies and they kind of cross their fingers that a few of them make it. It's like, good luck, honey, you can do it. Another is variations. So variations, in order to have natural selection, we have to have difference between individuals. So if everybody was identical, there wouldn't be natural selection because there's nothing to select for or to select against. And so in order to have it, we have to have some variety. So you have to maybe have long fur, short fur, no, sorry, long fur or short fur. Um, you might have to have uh, big feet versus small feet. And then we can start to have natural selection because then there are options. The third factor to have natural selection is there must be competition. So limited resources, so species must compete. I'll stick this right here to survive and so they they you know sadly they have to fight and so if there's just a little bit of food they're gonna have to tough it out and uh, be a little rough to each other unfortunately uh, so that uh, they can eat and those who are stronger and able to get the food better they will survive and hopefully be able to reproduce the weak ones eh, they don't make it and their their genes get removed from the pool so to speak they aren't able to create more offspring and uh, pass those on to the next generations so I know this is a lot of notes and we kind of had to squish it in what I encourage you guys to do now is to go through if you want to color code it underline some of the key words make some stuff stand out it would be really really helpful uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.